The Return of the Dragon The Shocking Way Drugs and Religion Shape People and Societies Written by Louis Ungett Read by Sonny Swinhart Chapter 1 Pandora's Box As a wedding gift, Zeus gave Pandora a box, but he warned her never to open it. However, Pandora was incurably curious and couldn't stop thinking about it. Finally, overwhelmed with the desire to find out what was inside, she peeked. But as so often happens when we ignore warnings, Pandora immediately regretted her action. Out from the box came curses the world had hitherto not known. Greed, envy, hatred, pain, disease, hunger, poverty, war, and death. Pandora's decision to ignore the warnings of Zeus led to untold miseries being poured out into the world. Pandora slammed the lid of the box back down, but it was too late. The story of Pandora has provided a template for many Western myths and fictional stories. Even in today's culture, everyone knows that when you are watching a movie about an adventurous archaeologist encountering a long-lost tomb, if he sees a sign that says, Whoever opens this door will be cursed. Bad things are in store if he chooses to go forward. Of course, this pattern is not just found in myths, novels, and action movies. We tell ourselves these stories because all too often, we need to be reminded that sometimes there are truly dangerous things that really will bring about destruction if warnings are ignored. There's another ancient myth that has a similar theme to it. We find it at the beginning of the biblical book of Genesis. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat from every tree in the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know what in the day ye eat thereof. Then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Genesis 3, 1-6 Here we see a similar pattern to Pandora. A god warns a woman not to do something. But in this story, unlike in Pandora's, a serpent appears. This serpent appeals to the curiosity of the woman. What would happen if she disobeyed God? According to Christian and Jewish traditions, the woman's decision to listen to the serpent and eat the fruit brought all kinds of evil into the world. The acceptance of this story as historical was once so common that the great Isaac Newton even considered it to be a literal account of events that happened roughly 6,000 years ago. But over the past few centuries, evolutionary scientists, paleontologists, and archaeologists have come to maintain that humanity and the world are much older. Humanity, in our present form, they say, is at least 100,000 years old, and the world itself is millions of years old. And, needless to say, science also tells us that serpents do not talk. And so, the story of Eve, Adam, and the serpent has shifted in Western consciousness from a story of history to a story of myth. Well, what if we learned that sometimes serpents do talk? What if we found sane and honest people in the modern world who would testify that they have indeed spoken with serpents? And what if there really is a forbidden fruit that brings horrors into the world? If we found these things to be true, how would that change our understanding of the story found in the book of Genesis? A few years ago, I heard about a drug called DMT, the abbreviation for the chemical dimethyltryptamine. What I heard sounded fantastical and impossible. People who took the drug all experienced the same things. They saw geometric shapes, not unlike those found in ancient Mesoamerican art. And they met entities. These entities were often described as machine elves or aliens. Some called them demons. 
Some called them angels, but the entities were experienced universally. Mystical hippies taking the drug to expand their consciousness experienced them. Hyperskeptical Western atheists experienced them. People from obscure tribes experienced them. I read a bit about DMT at the time, and then I moved on to other interests, but the subject seemed to keep coming into my field of consciousness. I read a book called America Before by Graham Hancock, in which he describes his own experiences on DMT. I listened to the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, and he talked glowingly about his experiences on DMT. I read a magazine article about Silicon Valley tech executives taking small doses of DMT as a way of gaining creativity. And with each of these, my interest grew. What was DMT? Why did people always experience the same things? What exactly were they experiencing? It was then that I went fully down the rabbit hole. I read everything I could on the subject of DMT, and the reading caused me to open up my interest to hallucinogenic drugs as a whole, including others like LSD, magic mushrooms, and marijuana. The more I read, the more convinced I became that there was something we were all missing, something deeper and more real than simple hallucinations. This book is the result of my findings.